Okay, YouTube. Version 2 of this heater. Redesigned, we got rid of our 20 pound propane tank. We upgraded to the 30 gallon air compressor tank. This is off a 1951 air compressor I got off the auction. Solid steel tank, really heavy, heavy. Way heavier than today's stuff. But um, same diameter pipe, three and three quarters chimney coming out of the top of the tank at an angle so we could move it out away from the wall further. But um, we uh, are screwing around here with um, some compressed air. This It doesn't need this, but I was just screwing around to see how hot we could get things and um, we can get her hot. Quarter inch fuel line, not big enough. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. And get it to focus here. Right there. It's this very small stream that's wide open. We need more. We uh, we got our maxed about everywhere. But um, tank temp. It's just blistering hot in here. It's ridiculous. But um, exhaust temp in the 300s, which isn't too bad, considering our tanks in the 500s, our rotor and pipe. Right now, I don't know if you can see that. Cherry red, that whole section. Of course, it's from the air blowing across, actually blowing the flame out just a little bit off that hole. But um, like I said, we don't need that. Ridiculous. Um, the idea behind this is completely off grid. Um, so I just want to see how hot I could get it. But we've been trending around eight to nine hundred for the rotor and pipe. Not quite glowing red, but real close. But our tank temperature runs actually around the 300, 380 range, not the five six hundred range. But um, as you can see, we got the door open to the outside. It's so hot in here. Windows are open. Oh, it's come down. What are we at? 78 now. We were pushing 90. We got a fan way over there, too. And uh, that's pumping air out. But, um, so, it's really hot. Before, I had the fan blowing into the house before I put this air on there. But um, I had some paint I couldn't get to down in there. And it started cooking off and stinking, so I started ventilating again. But I'm heating this shop, which is, what is it, 30 by 28 or something, insulated. And um, then I'm pumping the heat into the house, that window over there, in the basement door. And I'm pumping it in. And I got the house at about 75 degrees and in here. Well, as you can see, Let's see if that'll focus. 88 indoor, 16% humidity, and it's 29 outside. So, uh, yeah, she's really producing some heat. But we need a bigger fuel line, most definitely. And we also sealed our rotor around the bottom, which uh, before was vented, as you could see in an earlier video there. Um, so we sealed that airtight to uh, create a negative pressure there or a um, atmosphere that's starved of oxygen and we only gave it these little tiny holes we got six of those holes they're quarter inch and that creates turbulence in there and that allowed it to burn I got it sealed well enough that if I poured gasoline right in the pan lit it on fire and stuck the pan in there like it is the fire would go out so I started drilling holes until I got a pretty good flame now I'm just going through as you can see my hole sizes are kind of all different I'm just drilling my holes out a little bit bigger a little bit bigger so my upper row of holes are up to 3 8 the lower row of holes is quarter inch and there's the air compressor again but um, that charges and cycles every 20 minutes or so with about a psi going into the burn chamber there but um, so that's our update working much better we need to increase our fuel line size and uh, some more tuning to get a clean combustion. Okay, YouTube, real quick update here. Um, bottom holes are drilled out all the way around for the most part, and I took those to a 1964 drill bit is what I used. Um, quarter inch.
for end of the rotor. The rotor had to be sealed. Um, three eighths all the way around. You can see our drip right there. Very slow, but we're getting more I open these up and it seems like for whatever reason the bottom ones have more effect than the top ones. I'm not sure why that is for heat and activity. The more top ones I put in it didn't seem to affect it. And I proved that with the <clears throat> air compressor and putting just a small amount of air in those top holes there's really no flame activity difference. So I moved that same tube, same amount of air into the lower holes and the flame took right off. So. <clears throat> We also found that the fluid dampener, like a wood stove, well, you can't use that. That doesn't even work. As soon as you damper that, it changes the velocity in everything and it stops working correctly. You would have to retune your holes to match the dampener because you're tuning to your chimney. That's how this whole system works. So, but something to do with the bigger holes seems to give you better velocity in there versus the smaller holes don't work as well. Um, I'm still tuning to get it perfectly clean. My, I still have some smoke coming out of the chimney, so I'm probably gonna have to put in some more holes or enlarge some more holes, I'm not sure yet. Um, I may also go from the four inch chimney up to the six inch chimney because um, we're getting a lot more heat out of this than what we thought we were gonna. Uh, I'll show you how much heat we're getting. Um, it's ridiculously hot, 95 indoor. 29 degrees outside up on the tower and it just sucks we're pushing as much heat out of here as we can and into the house it's like 78 or 79 in the house and uh, let's see what this one says over here this one says 89 so yeah it's goddamn hot and this is our cold air intake so that's right by the cold air intake and it's 89 but um, so the flu dampener idea does not work at all. That just screws it totally. Um, it doesn't like that. Quarter inch fuel line, too small. Um, I mean, it works at the lower settings, but if you want to get everything you can out of this heater, you'd need to go to a six inch chimney and you'd have to go to a much larger fuel line. Quarter inch does not cut it. Um, you get a much bigger stream or drip out of a um, three eighths or half, which I'm thinking about going to but um, that and some additional holes um, and I think we'll have her uh, right now let's see what our temps are quick we're running 450 we're in the 450 range we've seen as high as 650 chimney temp 250 or so we'll call it and then obviously down here it just pegs it it's just ridiculously hot. I can't hardly stand here. Oh. But, I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, it's ridiculously hot. So this is heating 650 square feet a shop, which isn't very big, I know, but uh, that's what I got. And then I'm pumping it into, you know, my upper level of my house is like a 1100 or 1200 square feet and that's 78 79 degrees and still rising I need a better way to get it in there faster um, <clears throat> so this has the potential to heat a very large area um, and it's totally off the grid we've got an oil drip system I should show you that quick I suppose I used a needle valve which isn't big enough but three-quarter inch ball valve I'm just going to change this adapter and probably switch out to like a half inch line or three eighths line. And then what I did, very simple, I think that's a shower spigot for your wall. Um, that's You can find actual bucket spigots, that's just a homemade deal. And then I was actually able to order this, uh, oh it's full, I don't know if you can see that, this is full, but this is actually a filter insert. And you can get them offline, Baytech has them, 200 micron, it sinks in the bucket about this far. There you go, about that far, 200 micron filter system, so you can just dump your dirty oil in and it just filters it as it level drops. You can just keep pouring through it and when the filter gets dirty, it's screen material, you can take and clean it in the parts washer or you could take it whatever, soapy water garden hose to it, whatever you got. And um, then you can catch your floor dry and other stuff that gets in your drain pans. So quick filter system and then I didn't, for now, 
I didn't put the spigot obviously to the bottom of the bucket and it'll trap my water. But I'm going to do a water separator and better filtration system later on. But um, and I don't need all that copper. Preheating the copper we found out uh, through the grapevine causes the carbon and the oil to build up in the line and causes the line to plug up over time so you don't want to preheat your oil. So we went away from that idea because we were actually going to put a large tank here, 10 gallon or better tank. That's why we left that portion of the air compressor there. That's what the compressor was mounted to in the motor. And we were going to run right in and preheat our oil. But one, the tank gets too hot, you will end up with a fire problem, a boil over problem is what will happen. You'll boil your oil over and it'll be cooking off, it'll be stinking in there and it'll be too hot. And uh, if it started boiling over, you would catch it on fire and you'd have a real issue. But um, so we went away from that. We're going to go away from the five gallon hillbilly bucket idea too. But um, that's just to get us started so far. But um, as you can see, uh, it's a work in progress. Um, we've got more to do. So we'll uh, maybe give you a different update at a different time. Thanks, YouTube.